Hello and welcome to the Karate Priest Podcast. I'm your host, Father Daniel Duplantis. I'm a martial artist, musician, airman, and a priest of the Diocese of Homa Thibodeau. One of my other passions in life is teaching, especially teaching about the Catholic faith. Catholicism is a very deep faith. Jesus himself told Peter to put out into the deep for a catch. The most significant answers to life's most important questions often lie deep beneath the surface. Many people have questions about their faith. Through this podcast, my aim is to explore these questions and encounter incredible people along the way. Their stories show that God is constantly at work in our lives every single day, sometimes in the ordinary and sometimes in the extraordinary. Some of the topics treated in this podcast may be sensitive or controversial, but their discussion holds the key to truly living as God created us to live, which is to say that he created us to live in authentic freedom, loving him above all else. Thank you for joining me on this journey of faith. And I hope you enjoy this podcast. Hey guys, and welcome back to the Karate Priest Podcast. Today's episode, uh, I kind of want to go back to some martial arts content. It's been a while since I've done that. And so, uh, With that today, I kind of really want to get into something that I've been exploring a lot recently, um, just personally as a martial artist, and that is the history of Taekwondo. Um, As most of you know that my martial art, my primary art is Taekwondo. I've been doing it for 20 years. Um, And so as I've gotten older, I've started to really appreciate more of kind of the history and the culture of the art itself. Um, When you're young, you know, a lot of people get into Taekwondo as kids because their parents want to put them in some kind of martial art. Um, or things like that. And even, you know, when you're still like your, you know, you know, early teens, you, you kind of don't have so much a sense of the history of the art yet. Um, but one of the really just great graces for me lately with getting back into Taekwondo after seminary um, has really been like looking into the history of the art and getting so much more of an appreciation for where it came from, its history, um, the traditions we have now because of it. Um, and so uh, with that, I kind of wanted to start with uh, where did it come from? You know, it's become such a popular art around the world. Um, and that was intentionally so. Uh, one of the things the Koreans wanted to do, the South Korean government especially, um, was to create kind of more or less a Korean martial art that could be presented to the rest of the world and popularized. So you'd see Taekwondo in a lot of places. Uh, I think, you know, back in the, the, the 70s and 80s, karate was, was really, really big, especially with the, the dawn of of karate movies like the karate kid um, really kind of put karate at the forefront of things. Um, But nowadays Taekwondo has really taken off. In fact, it became an Olympic sport before karate did. And so with that, I kind of want to look at its origins and, you know, where did it come from? So the origins of Taekwondo really find themselves in, uh, in other martial arts uh, in addition to native Korean arts. There was an ancient art in Korea called Taekyeon. Uh, You had things like Subak, uh, which were kind of, you know, punching and kicking arts. Um, in fact, there were cave paintings in Korea that showed, you know, the sense of like, like kicking. Um, but the modern roots of Taekwondo really find themselves in things like Kung Fu and Karate. So back in the 1920s, uh, Karate was becoming very popular in Japan as you had um, the father of Taekwondo, Gichin Funakoshi, um, went from Okinawa, gave a demonstration in Japan on the mainland, And this art began taking off. You had the development of karate happening in that period. Uh, At the same time, Japan was occupying Korea and occupied Korea until the end of World War II. And so with that, you had a lot of these Korean martial artists who traveled between China, Japan, um, and picked up Kung Fu and karate and brought it back to Korea. And they began teaching there. And so these artists, these Korean martial artists founded what they call koans. And Kwan's is basically a Korean name for school. And so the, the development of modern Taekwondo really kind of focuses on how the, the Kwan's developed. And so we had five original Kwan's uh, before World War II. And those were the Chungdo Kwan, the Muduk Kwan, Songmu Kwan, Changmu Kwan, and the Jido Kwan. And what happened was you have all these founders of these Kwan's that were teaching at their various schools. But the Korean War really shook things up. And so a lot of these masters ended up disappearing 
during the Korean War, either defecting to North Korea or, or just being killed in action or, or disappearing entirely. And their students were charged then with finding these new schools. And so what we have here is after the Korean War, a lot of these schools really began to develop their arts. Now, a lot of what we would know as Taekwondo or traditional Taekwondo uh, is another art that we call Tang Sudo. Tang Sudo is really kind of the parent art, the early predecessor of Taekwondo, um, where a lot of these, these, these Korean masters were teaching karate, um, but what they were doing was teaching it with, uh, with native Korean arts like Taekyeon and Subak. Um, and so a lot of these, these schools were practicing what we would call today Tang Sudo, um, but what kind of changed the, the focus and the development was, was really this effort after the Korean War to try to unify these schools and to present a unified Korean martial art to the rest of the world. And so what happens is you have the founding of the KTA, the Korean Taekwondo Association. Um, this was kind of really reformed in 1961 um, and ended up trying to, to bring all these schools together um, to form a unified body of martial arts that the Koreans could say, this is Taekwondo. Uh, the KTA actually uh, was part of the South Korean government. It ended up becoming what we now call the Kukiwon. Uh, Kukiwon is the national school for Taekwondo in South Korea. It's in Seoul, South Korea. Um, and it's actually part of the South Korean government. It's a branch of their ministry on culture and sports. And so this is what the Koreans wanted to do. This was so important to them. They wanted to present a Korean art to the world, just as the Japanese had karate. Uh, one of the issues, though, with trying to create this new art was they were trying to move away from that Japanese identity. Um, the occupation by Japan left such a bad taste in the Koreans' mouths. They really wanted to take something uh, on a national level and present it as a Korean art. Um, and so you had a lot of changes that went from teaching the forms, development of new forms to get away more from uh, the, the especially Shotokan forms that ended up coming into Tang Sudo and, and some still taught in karate today in Taekwondo. Um, and so with that, you have several of these Kwans who joined in this unification effort um, and some that did not. Uh, and so we have, in a sense, a splintering of Taekwondo um, in the 1950s and 60s. Uh, one of the most famous splinterings was with General Choi Hong-hee, who actually really coined the term Taekwondo from the beginning, um, meaning the way of the foot and fist. So he came up with the name of Taekwondo. Um, and he taught his own style uh, that was called the Odoquan. The Odoquan comes from the Chungdoquan, which is one of the original five. Um, and so he taught his style specifically to be used in the Korean military. Uh, he taught it in South Korea. He also taught it in North Korea as well. And this is where we had problems politically, um, where the South Koreans were very upset by that. And so uh, Chung, uh, General Choi was a uh, exiled. And so he ended up taking his branch of Taekwondo and kind of forming it as his own. Uh, and that became the International Taekwondo Federation or the ITF, um, which in that time has also splintered as well. There were issues between uh, General Choi and his son, um, who uh, he wanted somebody else to inherit the ITF instead of his son. And so now there's kind of two branches of ITF Taekwondo, uh, both claiming the same lineage. Uh, so then from there, you have um, another Kwan that kind of broke off, or not to say broke off, didn't really unify, um, was the Mudukwan. And the Mudukwan kind of maintained its own identity. There's some that still do Taekwondo in the Mudukwan, um, but they also still do Tang Sudo, but then they renamed it to Subakdo. Um, and so they use more of that ancient Subak name uh, in their art. The remainder of the Kwans, for the most part, were able to come under this umbrella of Taekwondo. Uh, in Korea, they still maintain a lot of their own traditions. Um, but they, they started to standardize black belts under at least one standard curriculum, at least as a minimum standard. And so that's what we kind of ended up with now. Kuki means national. So the Kuki Yuan is the national school for Taekwondo. The Kuki style is the national style of Taekwondo in Korea. And so what these Kwans did was they, they now come up with, uh, with a kind of standard curriculum, the same forms. Um, trying to have more or less a standard for black belts around the world that could accredit themselves through the national school in Korea. What happens is also is that some people really still maintain the identity of their original Kwan, uh, which is something I, I really, really love. And one of the beautiful aspects of Taekwondo is, is if you can preserve the lineage of your Kwan, there's so many traditions that come from there. Um, so for example, with me growing up, and this is something I really had to kind of come to realization uh, as I got older and appreciate the history and started 
really looking into the history, was figuring out what Quan did I come from? Uh, I think that's something every Taekwondo practitioner should really do some research and figure out what is your lineage of Taekwondo? Um, so for me, growing up, my first Taekwondo school was specifically a Jido Kwan school. Um, and so we taught the older set of forms. We taught the Palgwe forms, which predated by a few years, the Teguk forms, which is now what's accepted by the Pukiwan. We taught the Palgways. Um, a lot of the way we threw techniques was very much a karate style because Jido Kwan taught karate up until it came into the Kukiwan system. And so with that, a lot of the ways we, we taught was, was karate style. We still taught some karate forms. We taught Rohai, uh, which is a Tang Sudo form that was taken from Shotokan as well. Um, and so that was my background. And so when I uh, went to the seminary, came back home, my former school is now closed. Um, I started training with a different school in Thibodeau, and their lineage is Chang Muquan, which interestingly enough, the founders of Jido Kwan and Chang Muquan trained together. Um, and so both of them have a very similar traditional curriculum underneath what is now Kukiwan. Um, so they taught a lot of the same forms, whereas we taught Rohai at my first school. Uh, the current school I'm at teaches Basai, which is from the same family of Tang Sudo forms. Um, and so it's amazing, like the parallel history that happens here. And so one of the things that we're doing now with our school is, is I've been trying to get in touch with, you know, my own personal kind of lineage of Taekwondo. Uh, my instructor, uh, my first instructor, his father was in the, the U.S. military. So if you're assigned to Korea, a lot of servicemen and women picked up Taekwondo in the time in the 60s and 70s after uh, we still had that presence in Korea after the Korean War. And so his father brought Jido Kwan back to this area. He learned Jido Kwan himself. Um, and so that's how we have this Jido Kwan lineage. Very recently, and this has been very exciting for me, I was able to get in contact with the American Jido Kwan Association, which is the American chapter of Jido Kwan here in the United States. And they preserve the Jido Kwan tradition. And that's something that I, I think is, is being lost in many ways around the world. In Korea itself, the Kwans are still maintaining more of their identities. But outside of Korea, because of this kind of um, standardization of black belt curriculum uh, with the Kukiwan, uh, it seems like a lot of the Kwans are losing their influence and their traditions around the world. But organizations like the American Jido Kwan Association are, are preserving those traditions. Um, they're preserving the curriculum of using both the Teguk and Pogwe forms, of incorporating the Tang Sudo forms as well, the Pyongan forms, as well as their black belt forms. And so what's happening is I've been able to establish contact to learn more about my history with them. Uh, hopefully very soon I'll be able to get my black belt through the Jido Kwan as well and help to preserve that history of the Kwan. Um, and so it's amazing, you know, again, for any Taekwondo practitioner to look at their history, to find out their lineage um, and to see how you've come from, you know, one of those original schools. Um, imagine this, like you, centuries down the road where Taekwondo is still being practiced, you know, you get further and further removed from these original Kwans and the founders. Um, the uh, founder of the school that I train at in Thibodeau now, Master Lee, was an original student of the Chang Mu Kwan. So he would be a first generation student. His teacher uh, or his student, who is now my teacher, Eric, is a second generation. I would be third and so on and so forth. So it's amazing how you know, we have almost kind of to bring in, you know, church stuff here as well. There's almost like apostolic succession of the Kwans and bringing your tradition there. Um, and so that's the thing, too. There are other Taekwondo schools who maybe market themselves as Taekwondo that are much more removed from those lineages um, and those original curricula. Um, and so with that, you know, I think there's part of being a martial artist where knowing your history is really important and knowing really the style. Um, what's happened a lot, and this is part of the history of martial arts as well in Taekwondo, is a lot of these martial arts become sports. And we see that with Taekwondo as well. It began to develop into its own sport. Um, it became a spectator sport first. It became an Olympic meddling sport in the 2000 Sydney Olympics. Um, and so what's happened is in some senses you have Taekwondo athletes, I call them athletes because they focus a lot more on the sports side of things. They focus a lot on the sparring. Um, and then you'll see videos of them doing forms and it's not quite up to what the Kukiwan standards are nowadays. And so that happens with just about any sport um, that has a martial arts background. Um, when you start to turn a martial art into a sport, um, there's certain aspects where you lose the art sense and it becomes more of just an athletic thing. There are great athletes in Taekwondo, um, but I think it's really important for these athletes as well to not lose touch with the traditional aspects of the art 
which is, you know, really still practicing the forms, keeping up with the forms, um, and keeping up with their dance certifications, you know, um, and not just doing it for the sport aspect. Um, and so with that, that is basically a brief history of Taekwondo. Um, and so uh, I'd love to hear from any of our fans out there who do Taekwondo. If you know your, your Kwan lineage, um, find us on Instagram, on the, the Instagram page or the Facebook page, send me a message. Uh, send me an email at the karate priest at gmail.com because I would absolutely love to hear from more people to find out about your history in Taekwondo. Uh, what Kwan were you from? Uh, how did it get to your area? How did, you know, we get these Korean martial arts to various parts of the world? Um, and so please absolutely let me know. Um, if you don't know, this would be a great time for you to start doing some research. Ask your instructor, where did they come from? What was their lineage in Taekwondo? And try to figure out from which of the original Kwans did they come from? That's all for today's episode. So thank you so much for joining me. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of The Karate Priest. If you enjoyed this podcast, go ahead and like The Karate Priest on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you're ever in South Louisiana, come visit me at the Cathedral of St. Francis de Sales in Homa. If you have any questions or comments about the show, you can also email me at thekaratepriest at gmail.com. Your questions are welcomed and may be used in future episodes. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please be sure to rate and review this episode. This podcast is produced by Todd Fisher and distributed by Metacortex Publishing. This podcast is copyright. Any previously trademarked or copyright content is used by permission. Information and opinions stated in this podcast should not be construed as medical advice. Please be sure to visit the official website for the International Association of Metatomics at metatomics.org or find us on social media for other unique content.